Hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Hyrule Chronicles Legend of Zelda D&D game campaign what what not not thing. I've lost trail of thought. I am Articulate T, the Game Master. This is episode 95. Um, and with me as always I have Renji Vox being played by the Nether Lad. That is me. I am the boy. Hello. I, ha I have Kaikuana as well as Hikansio being played by Alvarez. Yay! I have Zaiden Shari being played by Robo Pirate. Yeah, and these auto captions say it's the Chiropractor's Legends. Ah. <laughs> uh, and I have Max being played by Keystrith. I am not a Chiropractor. <laughs> Certainly not a legendary one. Oh, and, no. I, and Max will not let a Chiropractor touch him. Yeah. Given it's... that they usually work with people's backs. <laughs> It's true. There is that. So, so, what happened last time, folks? Uh, last time we arrived at the Hylia settlement and got straight to work helping people. Um, after uh, making sure that everyone was temporarily taken care of until the main force could get over to the Hylia settlement of uh, people from sent from the castle. Uh, we then... Um, had a lengthy talk with uh, Sophidia about what we should do um, in regards to her. Uh, between playing phone tag with Impa and um, having a long drawn out conversation and figuring it all out, we decided to um, fly to Castletown through Wind Walk, taking a stop through Masro Village and getting to the castle itself. Um, in which case we are going to figure out what to do, uh, which is probably go back to Masro to figure out some stuff and deal with some investigations, go down to the Ziggurat, and finally end the remnants of the Twilight Cartel over in the western end of Hyrule. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So many plots. So many plots. So many things so to many do. So many plots. So many wonderful things to see. Um... Wonderful, yes. you say? Well, it's, it's down to perspective, I suppose. Um... <laughs> I'm sure it looks lovely. Yeah. I so... it usually is picturesque. So, we find ourselves back in Hyrule Castle Town, at least very briefly. Um, mm -hmm. The, uh... Ah, oh, um... As you have previously mentioned, you have recently touched down within the courtyard of Hyrule Castle uh, with a once missing Princess Sophitia, um, uh, alias Zelda, had uh, had been um, brought back to her home and her family. Um, and suffice to say, uh, her brothers were happy to see her. Um, Impa had then suggested that you guys get at least a little bit of rest before making any ma other major plans, as well as um, uh, as well as this, as you've already decided, um, discussing the next plan of action for this uh, this task force to take uh, to take into consideration. Um, so, as we have uh, found ourselves in this situation, I feel it pertinent to ask. Uh, before you uh, reconvene with Impa to kind of cement what the plan is, um, is there anything you wanted to do in ca in the castle or in Castle Town at all? Um, is there anything you need to do? It is currently it's currently mid to late evening. Um, I I would like to see if uh, Uriel is open. I believe I was gonna go like. Where I pick on, and then we were all gonna go there or something, or the other way around. I don't know. Okay. I That's know exactly what around. it was said at the end. Was that Zaiden and Renji wanted to go to Uriel's, and Max wanted to grab Yukon. Okay. Like I out of character want to go to Uriel's, but Max doesn't buy useful things. <laughs> um. Especially magic items. <laughs> That being said, in regards to things happening in Castletown, 
somebody's been a little bit of a busy bee for the past four or five days. So I was wondering if, uh, as I kind of go through some of the options on this list, if you would like me to make some rolls. Um, sure. Let's see what, uh, let's see what, um, our erstwhile monk has been up to, and I'll, uh... Okay. Yeah. Um, so, the first thing on the list is, generally speaking, every morning he would walk Maxwell to Uriel's. And then go up to the Northern Guard post to get Flamgo's notes to um, sit and go through uh, on, on the Book of Medora. Um, to sit and go through while sitting with uh, Maximus uh, during his therapy and stuff like that. Okay. Um, and is it just... Uh, was it primarily to find anything specific like any more information on the on the medallions or any other artifacts within or are you is it just a general scour through the book to see what you can figure out um i would say that his primary thing would probably be the bombos medallion or other information in regards to items or things like that through the book okay um if that is the case you have flam goes notes with you so give me a investigation or arcana check with advantage it's the same. My poor dumb child. Oh, oh dear. Eight! Eight. Um, it is hard to read. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's something to be said about ancient syntax. Um, mm -hmm. And, uh, like, the, the ordering of words is confusing enough, and there are older words that may, like, have just fallen out of standard lexicon at this point. Um... I would demonstrate so, it by reading a bunch of Chaucer, but I don't want to. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. valid. I See, I enjoyed Chaucer when I was at, at school, but I can't remember any of it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah. The, uh... You find, like, um... You find a couple of references to a variety of different, of different things. Uh mostly um basic item descriptors of a divine nature in some cases as well as mechanisms for locations that inherently are difficult to um difficult to pinpoint um the most clear one that you get is that there appears to have been this ancient uh uh waterway uh that is described to be somewhere within the mountain ranges that surround the Gerudo Desert. Um, but uh, the exact mechanisms in it are hard to hard to pass. Um, as, as for magical items, you don't find anything that pertains to the location of the Bombus Medallion. You find its mention alongside the other two, um, but you can't seem to find anything where it would where it would say where it most likely is being held. Um, but there are other things such as a, a rod that can seemingly control constructs or um, a, a cape that allows people to fly, even if temporarily. Um, so it's, uh, there are a lot of things. Um, it's just a lot of information that's not clearly organized. Um, so you won't be able to find much information out of it at the moment, unfortunately. I will mark the um, ones that stand out in regards to the vague descriptions of uh, divine items mm -hmm. and the um, one about the secret waterway around the mountains to the Gerudo Desert. Just out of curiosity, because that's where I said the monastery that Hakan was trained in was, could I make a survival check to see if that waterway sounds familiar? Sure. Okay. It's ten. Ten, um, you've heard of it before. Um, there's been a couple of stories from other older, more scholarly Gerudo who lived within Gerudo Fortress who noted that at one point it was active and that's where most of the Gerudo got their water from. But as you have probably seen firsthand, there is a dry valley that kind of cuts through the mountains uh, that surround the desert by quite a distance. Um, and supposedly... Uh, probably runs a dry riverbed all the way to Lake Hylia. Um, so 
if there was any any water source that was originally there it's not active anymore it might have been turned off or blocked or lost to time or maybe it was even some kind of myth or something it's difficult to say well, but i've uh, got a gerudo buddy that might be able to help me if we ever get to see her again yeah <laughs> okay yeah. um the other big th there's two more things here um the other big thing is every day um if i can't see him specifically i'd probably ask impa if marius needs help with anything that i could provide um give me uh give me a persuasion check and an insight check okay persuasion seven wow. insight 12 i am rolling garbo today oh no um... so far <laughs> Okay. Getting them out of the way. Getting them um, out of the way. I'd say, like, Impa's not... Um, she's not standoffish. She's not the type of person to shirk that sort of thing. And you're part of... You are you are a member of the Storm's Eye. You're a royally appointed task force. Um, mm -hmm. So there is information that she would be willing to part with you. Um, when it comes to asking if Marius needs anything... Um, she is a bit dismissive in that it's just she says that as far as Alea is willing to to explain um, that the the young king is not exactly uh, what he needs help with is not something that you would be able to provide. Um, your insight tells you that she's not saying that because she don't she doesn't think that you're incapable. It's just that it's not something that you would normally find yourself partaking in it's a um it, it's 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 more diplomatic and responsibility stuff it's it's mm -hmm. the kind of things that you can tell that it's the kind of things that marius would ordinarily have been properly trained for if he managed to complete his training well into his fully adult life like by the time he finished it finished his education that the age of 21 in royal protocol and stuff um so he's he's struggling because it's quite clear he's too young for the position um and it's unfortunate that there isn't really much in the way of uh um alternatives uh <laughs> well if you can overhear or anything like that i will end up saying pretty much every time because i've been doing this every day it's, uh, I believe in him that he can do this, and then I'll go forward and keep doing what it is that I'm doing for the rest of the day. Yeah, it's a, um, I'd, I'd say because you've been doing it every day over that period of time, I'd say you probably would have had advantage in both those roles. So with the 14 and the 20 that you probably rolled at that point, mm -hmm. yeah. Like, after a couple of days, Impa relents, um, and she says something along the lines of... <sighs> I just think that he needs, at most, at most, I think that he probably needs something akin to a friend. And I know Alea is, I know Alea is busy and is meant to be there as his bodyguard and bodyguard and his advisor, um, but just having somebody who isn't part of the royal, like strictly part of the royal chain would be advisable and the same i guess can be said probably for rufus um and of course you probably had this conversation with you before sophitia was brought back so um mm -hmm. so yeah. probably over like depending on when it was i'd probably sit there and go out of my way to like have lunch with them or something like that to actually have conversations yeah about not royal stuff yeah and it's quite clear that, like, I won't even need a roll with this. It's quite clear that it's, it's helping. Um, it's I'll help also like make sure that it's different times too. Like, it's not Marius and Rufus. It's Marius so that way Marius can sit there and do what he needs to do without having to put on airs for his brother, and that it's Rufus so Rufus can be a kid. Yeah, yeah. Um, over that period of time, I think uh, Marius, it. For Marius, it's it's a case of, of a 
rich, well-to-do young man who has thus far, ex who has up until a point experienced the lap of luxury. Like, when you guys met him, he was an arrogant little brat who was into falcons and that was it. Um, and then his dad died and suddenly reality kind of literally roundhouse kicked <laughs> him in the face. Um, <laughs> I'll have greatness thrust upon them. Yeah. Um, so... He's stuck between continuing that arrogant facade, um, but also trying to maintain the air of responsibility that his station requires. And you can tell quite quickly that he is not handling any of it appropriately well. And Rufus, who after some time of just like your your ability to allow this 12 year old to be a kid still and rufus is an intelligent insightful kid he even says to you at some point that he doesn't believe that marius even ever wanted to be king um that he probably is in a state of mind that he just doesn't feel like the responsibility is something he can handle um and since they haven't had Sophie to back by that point, he Rufus himself is just like I am at a loss for words. Um or a loss of uh, a solution, I suppose. Like he, he kind of he relents that at, uh, he relents at one point that it probably would have been easier if Sophie was back because as mm -hmm. um as closed off as his older sister was, um out of the three of them at a push, and this is something that Impa and probably Nihilus has said to Renji at one point down the line, out of the three kids, if anything were to happen to the king, Sophie too would probably be the best candidate for rule. <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah. Probably um, something that Twilight Cartel knew as well. Yeah, quite, quite possibly. I mean, they tried to assassinate slash kidnap all four of them. It's just that the two most effective ones was the ones who killed the king and the one who kidnapped the princess. Uh, mm -hmm. um, um, two quick things and then we'll get to the last one. Uh, when addressing Marius, uh, I yeah. think Hikon will try to sit there and put in a different perspective. It's not arrogance if it's confidence and you know that it's that way. And maybe you could take some of the things that you liked about falconry and apply it here, such as guiding these different things and stuff like that. Uh, try to make it more of an interest thing. Obviously, Hakan's very limited because he has a minus two to int and he doesn't understand politics. But it's kind of like in his own special way with the, well, I like to cook. And because I like to cook, I can apply it to like these different things with like mixing flavors. And since you said that you like birds type of thing. <laughs> Um, with Rufus, it's, uh, I'm at a loss of what to do. It's like, well, does he like games? I mean, like, I hear guys play chess and stuff like that. Maybe you could have a game of chess or something with him if he gets some time. To kind of suggest making a little bit of levity. Kind of get a new thing there. Hmm. Um, whether or not they do that is completely up to them because Sikhan's got other things to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um... Yeah. And then in the evenings, um, he kind of goes through the taverns and sees if anyone has heard of whereabouts of Gorspire. Okay. Uh, give me a charisma-based investigation check. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to roll a charisma check because I'm not parenthesis in that, so it's just going to be persuasion. Okay. Uh, oh, damn it. <laughs> oh. Um, it is not my day. That's okay. It, it is okay. It is unfortunately not your day. Um, so with a four, uh, you don't, you don't well, learn any because this is again something I'm doing every day. So oh, yeah, 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 exactly. Uh, so with a five, um, you you don't burn any bridges, thankfully. Um, you don't. the The unfortunate aspect of it is when you go around to the taverns really the only one that you can ever get any discernible information about the whereabouts of of a particularly intelligent and crackly moblin uh, that might be within the southern parts of Hyrule would be the Laughing Moblin Tavern because that's specifically an area where most of the town guard and standing army go and have a drink. 
Um, it is a soldier's mm. bar. Um, and uh, the unfortunate thing is, is that they're... they're it's a mixture of soldiers who are who in their own way are probably eager for action which portrays the fact that they probably haven't seen much in the way of a proper theater of war um and any of the ones who have found it are either reticent to say anything because combat can be quite traumatic and most of them haven't even met you yet uh, mm -hmm. and others say that they're probably stationed in areas where it's not too far south of Hyrule, so they probably wouldn't know or see much in the way of Moblins. Like, there there will be one or two people who say that they've seen Blin around. They've seen a couple of groups of Bokoblins and maybe one or three mini Blins that are going around creating mischief and stuff, but Moblins... No, are... the one that's walking around with Hylian, that's Teeth Stealer. That's not Gorspire. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Yeah, um, the, uh, the, yeah, the, they, they haven't seen a moblin of the description that you have provided, unfortunately. No worries. Cool. Um, but that is everything that Hikon's been working on the past few days. Uh, that's not everything, but, like, the other stuff isn't that he needs to roll, uh, stuff. Generally speaking, he'd get breakfast for Maxwell, he'd walk Maxwell to Uriel's, He'd also drop a Risha off breakfast type of thing to make sure that she's eating okay and stuff like that. Oh. Because he doesn't really know how stuff like that goes. Okay. Um, uh, in regards to Risha in particular, mm -hmm. um, you probably have just... a decent passive insight. There has been a change to Risha. Um, the, uh, she's she ve she almost never takes guests she's constantly um working and uh is quick to get down to business um she's uh she's very work work orientated chances are if she would spend enough time to stop and have a conversation she would probably be thankful that you're making sure that she eats mm -hmm. but most of the time you ever interact with the estate of lady risha grastel it's uh through servants or scribes or aides or anyone who is able to kind of just take information and deliveries on her behalf so she doesn't have to stop focusing on her work and you can probably discern maybe that her concentration is likely on the war to the west because she knows that the last remnant of what her father was a part of is currently hiding there. Okay. That is good to know for future reference. Um, uh, other than that, he kind of... Oh, bye, Craig. Um, oh, God damn it. Oh. <laughs> He goes and he gets the counselors and kind of spends just a lot of time just walking back and forth between places. Um, he spends most of the time listening. Recording. Welcome Thank back, you, Craig. Craig. Uh, he spends most of the time doing the research while he's sitting there waiting with Maxwell. Kind of does the other stuff in regards to it. When it's time to leave, he walks the counselor back to his home, goes around to the bars, drops the notes back off at the guardhouse, picks up stuff for food, and then gets Maxwell and makes dinner. That's generally what his days are, and okay. has been for the past five days. Hmm. Nice. Um, but yeah, you've been... You, uh, Hikan has certainly been busy. Um, so with it being in the late evening, uh, would you... You probably might have been made somewhat aware that your companions have re are returning to Hyrule Castle Town at this point. Um, okay. Will, uh, would he At can't... some point, Max will just steal the the sanding star we have and say we're back. <laughs> that works. Um, if I if I have been made aware because I left the sending stone with Impa so you guys could coordinate, uh, I okay. would have rushed to gone to Sebastian's to get enough stuff for food tonight, dropped it off at the house, and then probably tried to make it back to the castle. Or since I know where these people like to go, I might just. Go to Uriel's. 
Okay. That's fine. Well, um, <laughs> Yeah. Um, that being said, it is kind of he still would have done the rest of the stuff there. So if Max wanted to catch Hikon first, Max definitely can. Yeah. This is going to fetch Hikon. Okay. You go and fetch Hikon. Um, Mara says that she will excuse herself briefly. She needs to return to the library in order to get some things sorted out and then. Um, maybe sequester herself to refill her like properly refill her stock of potions and everything um like properly resupply um since the uh the efforts of the highly settlement have kind of taken away her supply more than she was expecting it to um uh so she excused herself for that period of time um but yeah uh Max, you managed to find Hikan quite quickly. Um, oh, hello. Hands, hands in view. <laughs> um, Hikan would run up and then kind of stop, like the uh, Roadrunner in Looney Tunes things. <laughs> His arms are out, Completely and he's like, wait. Yeah. And then, 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 then um, his, his arms are out, and then he's like, wait, Max is iffy about hugs. And then, um... In that case, I will move. Like, I will I, I will not I, stop I, moving. I just put a hand on your shoulder. What? The gesture is returned. And I will, from the side, give uh, Hikan a hug. It's good to see you, friend. Good to see you guys too. Everybody okay? Everybody healthy, hearty, hail? Uh, so far. Good. Glad okay. to be back. Are you okay? I'm fine. I tried looking into things, but I wasn't having much luck. Um. What kind of stuff? Well, and then Hikan kind of goes through the things that we just went through. I could help um, with my plus 13. If you want to give it a go tonight, we can. Sure. Max is offering help, but not going to be much help. You have a high intimidation score. What are you talking about? <laughs> Who am I supposed to be intimidating? I'll take you to the Laughing Moblin, and then you can just say, we can handle it. All nice and intimidating-like. <laughs> okay. There we go. Max, not knowing what that place is, just goes, okay. <laughs> um, but yeah. Uh, did Zayden accompany Renji and Max to get Hikan, or did Zayden go directly to Uriel's? Because Kai is going yeah. directly to Uriel's. Zayden would have accompanied them. <clears throat> Um, yeah. Uh, also, um, Max is going to hand Hikan the bracer back. Oh, thank you. Okay. You will begin affixing it to his wrists and arms. Okay. Um, so, appropriately I'm guessing quick. it's time for us, or for me to come back. We're good. Good thing. Okay. Unless you want to stay here. Not really. I'm kind of bored. <laughs> At that, you can you can see uh, kind of like a relieved smile from Renji. And for the for the briefest second, it almost looks like Max is working. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. Uh, so. At least, at least you want to do some shopping. So. Okay. Do we want to go uh, over and visit Sebastian, or what kind of shopping? I just uh, visited Uriel. Him. Oh, okay. I, uh, I've realized I, I don't to go to... Hmm? I've realized I want to go more towards Sebastian's uh, location. Okay. Not specifically to Sebastian, though. Oh. Hmm. I want to go to the diamond in the rough. Ah. Uh... Uh... God, I have to remember how to do Remain's voice. 
It's been, <laughs> it's been literally years since Remain said it a has. word in this campaign. <laughs> um, did Max want to go to Crossroads Cross Stitching for an actual shirt? I did that after. Okay. Okay. I'm fine going to the Diamond in the Rough first. If you don't want to go as a group. I do grab, like, I I hold my shield out and say... Then to Crossroads, then to Uriel's. Sounds good. I might want to find a upgrade to this, and I hold out my shield. Right. Um, okay, so, uh, you make your way through the mid to late evening uh, commercial district of Hyrule Castle Town. Um, it's still fairly busy, People going about having, uh, going to grab a drink, just have a good time. Um, the uh, so the when you get to like the center within the uh, commercial district, you can see quite a lot of people just hanging about. Um, you soon enough find uh, the diamond in the rough. Uh, this pleasant little uh, jewelry shop. Um, which, as you remember, is run by a Gerudo by the name of Romain. Um, and uh, as you enter, like the, there's a pleasant little jingle of a bell as the door opens, and you can see, almost as if she hasn't moved since the last time you saw her, staring boredly at a book upon the desk in front of her, is Romain. Um, and uh, she kind of like looks over the... Uh, like scans over the book, Cass and I up to see the group of you, and then looks back at the book, and he says, "Hello, welcome to the Diamond in the Rough. Is there uh, anything that I might help you with?" Yes, there are two things. And he'll come over, pulling out the five hundred gold piece diamond that he has, and ask. If I trade this in, how much would you uh, charge to have two 300 gold piece diamonds? And, like, if you allow her, she takes a diamond, yep. um, takes out a, uh, like, a magnifying thing and inspects it as... Hmm. For this, do you sort of trade in for two 300 Gold piece diamonds in value? Yes. How much extra gold do you need? 150. Okay. Sidon will pay that. Now I have to do the maths because I have an awkward number for that. <laughs> there you go. Uh, okay. Uh, so he kind of like nods briefly. Uh, takes the the 500 gold piece diamond away and brings back two uh, that are relatively smaller. Um, equally well cut though and just kind of puts them on the table before you and then takes out a separate ledger in order to scribble down the details of the trade. Um, says that would be... I'll hand over the 150 as soon as my sheet lets me update itself. Okay. And then he comes to his second question. Uh, Miss Romaine, yes? Yes, that is me. How much warning uh, time do you need to repair 50,000 gold pieces worth of diamonds? You'd expect, because of the number, that you would see some kind of change in her expression. You don't get one. She just kind of, but she does stare silently at you for a moment and says, I'd like to repeat that number. Did you say 50,000 gold pieces worth of diamonds? Yes. Where did you get all this money? Takes the con time. leans to Max <laughs> and Renji and goes, Is that a lot? Yeah, that's a lot, and I'm wondering what he's talking about. That's so much money. Um, that's okay. a lot of money. <laughs> uh, she takes out a separate ledger, this one being more of a stock. Sort of thing it says. Did you need the diamonds prepared in some way, shape, or form? Just the raw diamonds or diamond dust or? Um, simply 
diamonds worth at least 50,000 gold pieces. Um, I hope you realize that this is a, a small jewelry store. Um, the rough value of the of the, uh, the jewels and other um, valuables that I collect here, uh, at least the ones that you can see here, are not exactly within that value range. Um, it will take some time for me to acquire such a, an amount of uh, amount of diamond. Um, oh, I understand. I, I'm still building up the funds for that as well. Excellently. Wanted to know at what stage I would be able to inform you to begin bavering, and how long the process would take. Allow me a moment to check a few things. Um, and then she leans down and takes up more ledgers and everything. It should take me roughly a few minutes in order to check over some things and provide a mathematical quota for you. Um, if you would be so kind as to... Feel free to browse for a while, though, as always, make sure to keep your fingers away from things that you do not intend on buying, and uh, I will uh, hopefully provide you with an answer soon. Um, and so she begins her, her math deliberations. Um, cool. I, I will sneak over to Zaiden and, and care, uh, quietly ask... Uh, what are you planning? Just something I've thought about for a while. But it's still likely at least some ways off. Right. Max takes the opportunity to lean over to her card and say, when was the last time we got paid? <laughs> I I did we, I did want to bring this up because while we aren't bounty hunters, yeah, we, we are did employed. bring back the princess. We are employed. Yeah. And we are employed. We I are hope employed. gainfully. <laughs> Akan thinks about it for a moment and goes, I think when we brought back Lord Gross well brought back. I think that was our last payday. Because I think Nihilus gave us some money before he left to go find some... Yep, yep. That I'm thinking about it. That was it. Yeah. Probably a while ago. You were given a stipend before you went off seafaring for a bit. Um, but in truth, you haven't been properly back to Castletown since then. Yeah. Mm. I trust you... us getting it together. Yeah. Um... So yeah, there's a... Yeah, but then I was thinking maybe we should wait until after we get paid to <laughs> to go to your house. <laughs> maybe. I mean, you still have a meeting with him for later. Um, yeah, true. Okay, yes, then. Yeah. Um, after a while, Romain does come back to you with a number and says... I suppose it depends on whether or not you require the uh, the diamonds to be raw or cut. If you would like cut diamonds, then I can stretch my contacts a little bit. Um, I believe I have an exporter in Sarcosa who is um, who specializes in jewelry that comes from Holodrum, um, but that could take three or four weeks upon request. Um, not taking into consideration uh, uh, whether it's sea, traffic, that sort of th that sort of thing. Um, if you would like it raw, then I will have to speak to one of my contacts that is uh, in the Death Mountain range and the diamond mines that are there. Um, of course, that could take much, much longer because raw diamonds are needing to be properly valued. Um, and the labor that goes into it as well might make it a bit more expensive. It, it depends, in truth. Um, and of course, it would have to be a fairly quick transaction. I do not believe I would feel safe if, uh, depending on how much people are aware that 50,000 worth of diamond would be stored in this humble little shop of mine. 
Also for the people in chat or listening uh, later on, uh, it's okay if you haven't heard of Holodrum. It's pretty underground. God damn it. I wish I could. Well, let me keep making puns. We are going to get that uh, black and green max, and then it's just going to be a gateway to Tiamat. <laughs> it may maybe Dorfman didn't have enough time to make two more. No. no. We, maybe. We broke we broke the spell before it could be complete. <laughs> this pun damage sponsored by Fizzban's Treasury of Dragons. <laughs> um I had to. Uh, you you, you okay. must see this. Uh, uh, <laughs> anyway, um yeah. I don't actually know whether or not it needs to be or cut diamonds. If it's for the components for a spell, I I won't dis I won't be picky either way. It's it's literally just a case of um having diamonds of that value. Um okay. just to be on stuff. Yes, Zyde will say cut uh cut or roll does not especially matter. I simply need a certain quantity. Very well. I will never figure out spellcasters. Um, so... Max in the background like, yeah, me neither. <laughs> so, you would like... Would you like to place the order now? Of course, if I was to take the order now, I would require a deposit, just to be sure that I will receive the full payment in turn. Um, it will be half up front and then half when the order is fulfilled. Now I, as stated, I believe I will need some time still to gather such funds, but I wanted to know whether or not it would be something on the course of weeks, months, or years to gather that much. It would definitely be in the course of weeks. Um, oh. Be thankful that Holodrum is a relatively profitable avenue that new explorers are going to, but um, of course it will take time to travel by sea, um, which is where that comes from. And of course there is the, cha and the task of bargaining with the people of Holodrum for the amount of diamonds that you require. Um, but we'll... I will, we shall do what we can. Um, just feel free to let me know when you have the money on hand in order to begin the ordering process. Um, I will save some time and see if I can send a letter to Sarkoza just to ensure that they are aware that a potential order is in the works. Yeah, wonderful, thank you. How far away is Holodrum? <sighs> like the distance away. And a good wind, my sailor friend has told me that it would take roughly two and a half weeks to get there and two and a half weeks to get back. I don't nod his head slightly and say, so the holodrome is... they have plants, yes? They have... but I would hope so. <laughs> I don't want to like... nod a bit more. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, the plants are loud, plants are bad. <laughs> oh, no. Well, you have been exceptionally helpful. Thank you for your time. I, I'm kindly asking on behalf of GMs everywhere, if that is your plan, please make sure Hardy knows and can prepare for it in time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Zayden just decides, you know what, I'm bored, I'm gonna get to Holodrum now. Bye! <laughs> I'll be do back in like right. two and a half weeks. Do you have to know the plant you're going to in order to do that and do that? Yes, yeah, scrying. That? Oh, he has scrying, doesn't he? Yeah. Uh, well, thankfully, this is prior to a certain point in the Zelda timeline. Holodrum's, like, society is literally just one village, and the rest of it is unconquered wilderness. So it's like, mm. fine. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> yeah, well, I was thinking more for the um, walk through plants, but to do that, you have to touch the tree. I see. Oh. oh. They physically would have to go there to... I mean, I could get teleport knives level. Ooh. Ooh. It's one of my <laughs> options. Okay. Anywho. <laughs> Anywho. 
We're not actually going there, don't worry. That's alright, it's fine. Not yet! Not yet. Okay. Not unless the plot takes us there. Well, after thanking her again for her time, uh, Zaiden will happily step out with the rest of you. Okay. Imagine needing to of the space file. In the meantime, Renji's been racking his brain, all like, what kind of spell requires 50,000 gold pieces? <laughs> I, I haven't figured it out yet. Half that much. I wonder. So I was checking the compendium. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, it's not Wish. <laughs> No, Wish, wish, wish allows you... I don't think Wish costs anything. Wish doesn't cost anything, no. Um. <laughs> you just have a limited amount I mean, of times you can use it for whatever. Yeah. Uh, if you're using it to do anything other than... What I know, um, yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, Onwards to Crossroads cross-stitching. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, right. Do we go to Crossroads cross, cross stitching first or Sebastian's first? Max has been in a bad. Uh, Max has been in an ill fitting shirt for a week. That is true. <laughs> <laughs> Literally just an ill fitting shirt and trousers. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Uh, I'm, so... I'm just thinking, like, direction wise. It's it's only I mean, thirty foot to, to crossroads to... cross stitching, so we can do that in a turn. If you want to go to Sebastian's, then you can go to Sebastian's while we go to crossroads. We can meet up there. That's fair. Yeah, okay. I have some stuff to sell. Okay. Um, which voice do I want to do first? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Let's start with Sebastian. Our um, favorite Tylian. <laughs> our favorite Tylian. It's the, the boy. Go the goodest boy. Um, I thought so. the goodest boy was the con. <laughs> uh, I, I'm a PC, so it doesn't... It's, it's mm. not I'm pretty entirely. sure Hakan is willing to share the title. Yeah. Because he's a good boy. Although, I will be right back. I just need to take care of one thing. No way. Um. Hey, uh, while we're walking over to Sebastian's, and totally not to fill time, um, and uh, Hikon will pull out the Book of Mudora and go to the page of the uh, Divine Artifacts and things. Um, and sh probably show it to Renji, because Renji's the most well-read. Oh. Um, and then when Renji's, uh, finished it's with that, you probably... Max is reading over his shoulder, trying to. <laughs> that is fair. Um, but I think we've addressed that Max doesn't know a lot about history, because of yeah, where he grew up. Yeah, but he can still read the words. That's, that's fair. <laughs> um, and then I'd probably, after that part was done, and just kind of take it over to Zaiden for survival today, even though I don't think Zaiden's been in the west of Crudo. But Zaiden's old, so it might, have surpri it might surprise me. So, what is it you're trying to, like, have uh, Renji focus on? Um, history in regards to the divine weapon that's described with the vague words, because it comes like, I don't know. I'm lost. What are the vague words again? I don't know because okay. Arnie hasn't said anything. And then nice. for Zayden, it's uh, location type of thing. I am back. Welcome, Welcome back. back. Thank you. Just in time. Yeah. Um, okay, so Sebastian's. Um, mm -hmm. So you, uh, those who are going to Sebastian, make their way through mm -hmm. the streets and find themselves uh, in front of the store, Sebastian's normal general store, dot, 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 honest guys. Um, and uh, as it kind of like, the wording sort of hangs off the sides of the sign it's meant to meant to be on. Um, and- uh, It is amazing. As, as familiar as always, it is just a clutter of stuff 
that is in there with goods and everything that's sitting in the window. Uh, you open up the door, the bell rings reliably, and stepping out in front is uh, your green-scaled, mustachioed-wearing, perfectly regular Hylian Sebastian, who looks over, sees you, and, and smiles widely. He's like, oh, hello! Welcome back! Good evening, my friend. It is good to see you. How are you doing? It's been a longer time. It, it has. We've we've been out and about. We've we've seen half the country by now. <gasps> oh, sounds like a good story, yeah. Oh, indeed. But there's there's some stuff that I uh, I would like to see. Um, if we can, you know, make a deal, unload some things. Oh. Well, come in, come in. Place your things upon the desk and we'll see what we can do, yeah? Right. Uh, so, I have one set uh, of armor, a uh, perfectly functional breastplate. Then I have a rusted breastplate. I have a rusted shield as well. Um, I have a crossbow with, uh, I believe, 18 crossbow bolts. Okay. Um, and a short sword uh, that I'm no longer using as I, you know, I can have whatever weapon I want. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, so, um, Sebastian will look over it. Um, mm -hmm. And he's, he says... Hmm, I'm not a much of a person to sell weapons, but mm. I think I can do something here. And he's just kind of like examining each of the things. Essentially, the, the total of it would be he will offer you the half the value um, okay. for the regular things, and for the rusted things, a quarter of the value. That would they would normally be in the uh, uh, in the uh, player's handbook. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um. So, I don't have, uh, so, uh, then the rusted shield would be two and a half gold pieces. Uh, rusted breastplate would be a hundred. Yep. Uh, crossbow would be twelve fifty, pretty much. Mm -hmm. Uh, twelve and a half. And the crossbow bolts, uh, let's see. Um... That would probably be nine of them. So we round it up to five nine, silver. Nine, five silver. Okay, yes. Yeah. Because the normal, uh, like, it's a, it's a gold for a, for a pack of twenty. So he's willing to to round it up to the. Um, right. Yeah. Um, I I would like to haggle for a, a ten percent like increase. Okay. I'm gonna haggle Sebastian. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so you'd like to haggle with Sebastian? That's fine. Um, so let's uh, so let's do the haggling first, and then we'll do the math afterwards. Um, give me a persuasion roll. A persuasion roll. An eighteen. Okay. So I rolled a five. <laughs> Thanks for both rolling like garbage. <laughs> um so uh with an 18 um yeah that's only a 10 percent i'm i'm asking he's yeah he's sebastian he's a good lad he'll get he'll give you the 10 percent. that's fine um yes. yeah swindling um, my friends <laughs> <laughs> you're lucky you can barely has a concept of money or he'd be glaring at you right now <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Um, oh, it's business. Yeah, a ten percent on top of what you've uh, currently been offered for it. He's perfectly willing to part with that. Um, but yeah, in all honesty, when it comes to Sebastian, like he's he's doing his best to be like amenable and um, continue building up a rapport because he likes you guys. Um, and uh yeah he i like him too but i also know what business like <laughs> i like him too but money um, <laughs> um 
But yes, uh, he ultimately finds himself just uh, like he he's asking questions. He's just trying to see whether or not you guys are OK, because um, mm -hmm. it's been a while since he spoke to you and he just wants to be absolutely sure. Um, but yeah, you uh, uh, it depending on how long you want the conversation to go on for he'll he'll keep you there for as long as you want to stay mm -hmm. um i'm i'm happy to uh do like this um and like keep up the the pleasant conversation up until people show up okay um so uh if and that's the case i'm meanwhile i'm also figuring out um, so the total would run 320 gold pieces and 5 silver pieces, but including, uh, the 10%, mm -hmm. that so. would be, uh, 352 gold pieces, 5 silver pieces, and 5 copper pieces. He can yeah. keep the copper, he can keep the silver and copper pieces. <laughs> I'm, 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 to say if you're gonna just give him the copper <laughs> i know that would be so uh, i i i i caught myself i mean it would be funnier if you converted it to electrum <laughs> oh oh yeah that would be just desserts for re ng re remember that that's a currency yeah mm. mm -hmm. i i don't it's have funny, electrum it's not even on the sheet um, it is on the D&D Beyond one. Yeah. It's not on this one. That's fair. That's fine. Um, but yeah, because you, uh... Fuck Electrum, that's why. This makes it more complicated. Yeah. 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 That's what the EP is, is Electrum pieces. Yeah. It's right above it's gold it. and right below yep. silver. I have copper, silver, gold, and platinum. I think I might have taken an option to got rid of Electrum. <laughs> Just mm. needed it yourself. <laughs> Fine, I don't need it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um. But yeah. So. Well, I, in, in the meantime, I would like to like ask uh Sebastian how things are going with business and if he's heard anything in the city. Uh. But if uh, might might not be necessary to uh, RP that if you don't That's okay. want to. That's okay. The um. Yeah. Sebastian is uh. He says that business is okay. Like, he hasn't mm. he hasn't lost anything. He hasn't really gained... Like, for him, nothing has changed. Mm. Um, like, you, he's, he still gets the occasional people coming in, having the weird looks because of the name of the store. Um, but otherwise, yeah, business is all right. He hasn't really experienced much. And mm. uh, unfortunately, the one, the one thing that separates... You, your patronage than the patronage of any other person with the Hyrule Castle Towns, you guys actually stop to talk. Like, you, you, you engage in pleasant conversation, and everyone else who comes in just buys a thing and leaves. And he's not hes not adverse to that. He understands that people, you know, it's a, it's a massive Does city. Sebastian people have, have things to do. Yeah. Friends? Yeah. Us. Yeah, yeah he has aside, you guys. Aside from us, like, does Maxwell. he have friends in the... Uh... Does he have, like, I don't know, a group where he plays cards or, like, a role-playing game or something? He's the only person who works in in his general store. He has to, he, like, he doesn't really have time for it. Oh. Um. But, yeah. Um. But he's, he seems okay. He seems fine. Um. He's just, uh, yeah, just... Just carry on with his general working day. Um, All right. Yeah, and uh, as you as you kind of engage in that pleasant conversation, meanwhile, mm -hmm. at Crossroads Cross Stitching, um, you uh, those who have gone to Crossroads Cross Stitching find themselves uh, in front of this uh, this humble little shop and heading inside. You see the bolts of cloth and different bits and pieces of of. Uh, of clothing and everything just um lining all the walls and sitting at his table as always is the bulky form of ike 
who is currently working on a bolt of you know, like a, a different kind of garment and he looks up and he gives you a nod and a pleasant smile and says ah oh, good evening to you it was a uh, been a while since i've seen you folk around here and as i understandable um so uh i'm guessing you haven't really stopped by for a uh uh for a chat have you um glances down at oversized shirt glances back up <laughs> oh, i see i understand um are you just wanting that resized or did you want it restyled as well i'm just gonna get something else i think okay i think i still have your measurements from before uh have i actually made clothes here for you before i can't remember it's been a while nope it was the um it was the uh, castle uh, stylist that made us close. Mm. Yeah, it was the castle stylist. Uh, is that... uh, so the image I'm sending you in the group chat does have... It's basically what I designed Max at level 14 to look like. So mm -hmm. it does have the outfit. Mm. Okay. Right. Ooh. There it comes. Interesting. Okay, I really like that. Um, all right. Um, so he kind of like he kind of takes a gander at you um, and says, "Tell you what, for about let's say thirty gold, if you want me to, that is, I can design you something real quick. In the meantime, I'll I'll give you one. I'll give you a shirt that is your size." Um, so you're not going around in a tent. Um, and then, uh, it might take me a little bit of time, perhaps, uh, perhaps a day or two. Um, but if you come back, I'll have something that might suit your style a bit more. Let's just put 30 gold on the table. All right. Um, so he goes over to one of the, the clothing racks and he finds you, um... He, he basically takes off a couple of uh, tunics, which um, which do look like they, they would fit you. And he says, uh, black or blue? Yep. Okay. Um, black. All right. Uh, so he hands you the black tunic. Uh, you can keep the coat hanger, by the way. Uh, he puts the other one back on the rack. Max um, stays at the co-hanger is like, the fuck do I do with this? <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, he goes back, he kind of like, he does a circle around you, like he kind of like takes in your measurements a bit, just by eye, and is, um, says, alright, okay, alright, I'll have something ready for you as soon as I can. Um, in the meantime, feel free to keep the shirt. Uh, stop back in when you have the ability to and hopefully I'll have something that you'd be uh, would really suit you thanks not a problem um, uh, Max will just change into the shirt okay um, if I if Ike sees anything he doesn't make a comment um, but he just kind of sits down and uh, scribbles on a piece of paper like general notes uh and other things like that he then uh tears off the bottom part of it and hands it to you and you can see that it has like a a, a short sequence of numbers on it and says uh, just in the event that i have other commissions that come in and i lose track of it just keep a, a hold of this one hand it back to me i'll be able to know which things on the rack is yours and uh, be able to give it to you okay. all right um Oh, anything else I can help out with at all? No. Thanks. Not a problem. Uh, thank you for your patronage. Hope to see you soon. And um, he sits down and uh, puts the thing he was working on to one side, gets out another bolt of cloth, and takes out a pair, like a kind of a tailor's chalk, and begins to draw on it uh, with various lines and stuff. Um, and I have to go meet up with the others. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, after a short moment, you uh, head southwards to meet up with uh, with folks at, at Sebastian's normal general store. Um, 
and uh, you catch um, you catch them in the con in the middle of a conversation with Sebastian. Um, it's otherwise yet like laughing pleasantly, and um, Sebastian looks over and sees you. And says, "Oh, hello! Good to see you again." Um, <laughs> hello. <laughs> how are you doing? Uh, doing okay, thank you. And uh, and you? How how have you been? I've been uh, uh, talking to your uh, friend here, and um, have you uh, ha how you been been uh, been uh, finding the journeys? Uh, last journey back here is refreshing. I see. It, it was something, yeah. Um... <laughs> Trying to figure out what Renji actually thinks about flying. <laughs> and this is mostly for everyone else. Like I said, Hakon's been coming here to get foodstuffs for most of his time in Castletown. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, but yeah. Um, but much like much like Renji before, uh, he will happily keep you here as long as you're willing to stay and indulge in with polite conversation um of course time will draw on and uh like i i am what i was just waiting here for my friends because that is what we had uh yeah, I, planned on I, i'm pretty certain over the last couple of days hikon has learned how to do the uh quick version of a midwestern goodbye so to speak um <laughs> well and we'll definitely like sit there because it's like I know that they wanted to go to Uriel's, and I know things are getting late, and people need to eat, and we still have meetings to do, and I have been very busy this week, so it's just kind of like a, and, well, you know what, next time that we're available, we'll go ahead and stop in and check on you again. Thank you for helping us out, Sebastian. Oh, no problem. And we'll escort everyone out. <laughs> Thank you, come again! And it's just kind of like waves excitedly as you leave. Um, I a small kind of wave and... Does, does the polite nod. Hmm. All right. Um, so, are you making a beeline for Uriel's? Or is there I any other place don't have any other before? plans. I, I did suggest it might be better to wait until we get paid so we know how much money we're working with. That is true. We might okay. uh, do a quick uh, so morning like stop. We know what we're able to buy. Yeah. Yeah. That is true. Okay. So save us having to go there twice. Hmm. Alright. I'm trying to remember how much money I gave you um, as part of the stipend. It was a lot. Um, and now we have the princess back, so... Yeah. Technically, it's not just that, and I don't mean to sit here and like be that guy, <laughs> but we also kind of uh, saved an, uh, an agent of the crown as well. Yeah. You did, yeah. Uh, that we 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 did. I I I don't and want to think took, about my dad we, too much. We took out Auckland. Mm -hmm. That's it true. Like it's mo it's mostly uh, we we remember. stopped a plague. Yeah. You're welcome. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what can I say except? It's mostly me trying to figure out um how much I gave you guys so that what I give you next seems like an appropriate upgrade. Um, uh, well, I think the last time we were given funds, we got about 5,000 each. Oh, okay. Maybe a bit less. We have just over 2,000. Yeah, it was about 5,000 because that's how I got the braces of defense. They were yeah. that expensive. And I just went in and was like, oh, crap, right before we left, it just dropped the bag on the table. And for okay. me, Aspiration was also about 5,000 gold, and I, like, I don't have that much cash, cash anymore, even though, yeah. you know, I'm so a rich boy. We got 5,000 for whatever the, the last thing was. Okay. That's good. Is yeah, it's definitely one of those things where I was thinking to myself, was like, how much have I given? Because because there was a number that was in my head, but I was double double guessing myself as to whether or not that's the same mm. or less than what I've already given you. Because I am a Monty Hall DM, and it's just, <laughs> um, but yes. So, uh, 
so if you need to if you wanted to wait until you got paid probably then you chances are the next thing you want to do is have a have a conversation with Impa as to mm -hmm. cementing what the task force does next um right yeah so that would require going back to hyrule castle um do we want to do that before or after dinner up to you do you guys want to eat first my brain is just immediately stopped by the idea of food <laughs> <laughs> good oh, it is good all right so food um so you guys going back to your house then in order to have a meal yeah. or are you going to eat out I think well, uh, it, can't it, can't it depends on what I can't says yeah I can't they just buy a bunch of food to cook for people yeah. mm -hmm. okay but did we know it has been cooking for you every day that he's been with you guys <laughs> yeah <laughs> but but like we've been on the road yeah. Yeah. Imagine what he can do Hikon in, the, in is, a proper we're kitchen. We're going though. back to the house. Hikon <laughs> is a simple fair. person. Do you I'm... think he would neglect his friends in the possibility no. of them coming home? <laughs> Not in the slightest. It is just like Renji is one of those people. I am one of those people where I need to know or hear from someone, hey, we're going to do X or we're okay. going to do Y. Um... Hikon had heard from Impa. Impa probably sent a messenger after you confirmed that you guys were coming back. So Hikon, that's why he was rushing around. Mm. Yeah. And and if Hikon mentioned any mentions any of that uh, during like our run around the city, it'll be fine with Renji. Okay. Um. So you guys return to the house. Um. You uh, you enter in um, you enter into your uh, to your own purchased home, um, and um, you uh, you find that Maxwell is um, currently uh, sitting down at one of the tables, just uh, sitting down at the at the dining room table um, already. He's uh, kind of just looking over a singular book um, uh, that Hikan, you know, has been uh, been given to him by um, by Uriel as part of just a general teaching thing of like, here's a thing to concentrate on, like here's a thing to take you away from the rest of the world for a while so that you can to help focus your magics, that sort of thing. Um, mm -hmm. uh, as for Maximus, did you say you guys were letting him stay at the house before? If that I was possible. Would, I would yeah. I offered that, but I believe he's been staying in the dungeons. Okay. Um so it's just Maxwell for the moment. Um and uh he looks up and he sees all of you and says Oh, um hey. Uh welcome back. Hi, Hikan. Um Hi, and he can't go straight to the kitchen. <laughs> How are you doing? Um, I've been doing all right. I think um, training's taking a lot of time. Um, I'm not sure how well I'm keeping a hang of it, you know. Um, but I, I, I haven't, I haven't blown anything up. That's that's good. I suppose so, yeah. Hmm. How's uh Uriel as a teacher? He's he's patient. Um he's he's not like me though. He doesn't he's a he's a wizard, he said, so he's he's more book smart sort of hmm. thing. I'm just using what words he's using. Um, so it's, he, it takes him a bit to understand what it's like to just have magic be, like, a part of you, you know? Um, yeah, I think, I, I think, I, I think, uh, I will look at, uh, Max at that time as like, I, th yeah, I think we've had similar conversations. Yeah, 
is not the only one. Hmm. Uh, yeah. Um. I don't know if anyone's told Maxwell of the existence of Maximus. I have not. Mm. Okay. Because honestly, it's not Hakon's conversation to have. Hmm. Mm. Um, and so, while I've been here, it's mostly just been, I've been taking care of things, I have things to take care of at the castle. Yeah. Um, the things that I've been doing with Maxwell, though, is, it can't really be helped in regards to force of will, but kind of like the same stuff that I was trying to do with Max in the background, or kind of, like, help with it, is just breathing exercises and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, and he's been, he's been thankful for that. Um, mm -hmm. but outside of outside of going to learn how to control his magic from Uriel he's been he hasn't really left the uh, the house he hasn't had much of a desire to explore um, so he would he would come back he would either sit down and read a book or sit down and stare at a wall or stare at a ceiling or stare at the fireplace that sort of thing um, constantly in deep thought but otherwise, yeah, he hasn't really done much of anything exciting uh, while you've been tending to Maximus or any anything else within Castletown. It's been it's been pleasantly easy to keep a track of him. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, um, of course, this always leads to instances where when he runs out of the one or two topics in which he can ask people about, which is literally what he learned from other conversations, which is just hello how was your day and some variation of how's the weather what have you been up to lately and then that's mm. it once he runs out of questions he makes no further effort to continue the conversation and just sits there in awkward silence that um, sounds familiar yeah <laughs> <laughs> um but uh yeah um did anybody have anything they wanted to do while they were waiting for he can't to prepare dinner I th I might join in to help at uh, the kitchen. Okay. If uh, Hikan la lets me. Max is gonna talk to his kind of sort of brother. Okay. You can help. You can be a sous chef if you want. Yeah. Sure. Um, right. So, uh, Zayden, anything you wanted to do? Uh, no. Okay. Um, what did Max want to talk to Maxwell about? Uh, I think one of the more like personally relevant thing would be about his progress controlling his magic. Hmm. He just said sounds like I think I started to get a some kind of. I'm not sure if control is the right word. Hmm. Kind of an... Understanding, I guess? No. Awareness of what's... Gestures to himself going on. Right. Okay, um, and like he'll he'll probe with the occasional question, um, but otherwise will remain silent and listen, uh, listen to as much as you're willing to tell him. Um, I think the first like major hurdle to it, which I had to get over was the hardest one which is understanding that what he did is a part of me now like fundamentally right when I figured that out and came to 
terms with that, it was easier to not just explode everything at a moment's notice. I see. Hmm. He kind of looks down and flexes his fingers a bit. Right. Um. Did, um. He's, he's, um. He's gone now. Can't do it to anyone else. Good. Good. Just have to live with his consequences. Try and make something good out of them. I, I guess so. Um. Not. Not sure what good I can do with this, though. He kind of gestures to himself, like a. There's a there's an instinct to think that his conversation with with you, Max, is that maybe there's an aspect of him that looks up to you. Um, oh, in that, because like he's he's under the impression he's under the impression that his control over fire is purely destructive. Um, and that all he can do with it is destroy. And he sees you as someone who has an equally destructive capability, but has managed to get their stuff together enough to be able to do something more beneficial with it. Um, like it's so when you say face the consequences and try and make something good out of it, he's. He has he has that same kind of sticking point of okay, but for me, how do I do that though? <laughs> um Max thinks about it for a second. And says Have you tried helping out a gun in the kitchen? Um I'm not really good at making food. Stuff I kind of just... Fire is used for cooking all the time. Maybe you could help that way. Maybe I'll help out you as well. Yeah, I that could be a good idea. Um I mean they've it kind of like looks over in the direction of the kitchen where you can hear sizzling and Fire crackling and stuff, and I guess they've already started. But maybe... probably some light animation, animated conversation. Yeah, uh, maybe, maybe next time. Um, yeah. Thank sake you. of brevity, I'm teaching him how to make grilled cheese in the morning. <laughs> That's fine. Um, it's something simple, and he can practice. Yeah, yeah. Um, so as you're, uh, as. Uh, as Max and Maxwell have this conversation, what is it that Hikana is preparing? The very awkward conversation of two two recently reunited siblings who know nothing about each other. <laughs> yeah. mm. I think in this case, uh, instead of specific or, or like a general grilled cheese, uh, it should be uh, a cock Maxwell. Oh, nice. They're like, making it tomorrow morning, not now. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That one's for tomorrow for um for Maxwell. Uh, as, purposes of fun damage. Yeah. As what? for um what Hikan is making right now, uh as Renji watches him kind of go through things, it's mostly Renji sitting there in the background handing things as Hikan asks for him that are out of arm's reach. Mm. Um <laughs> but what you see is um Stay like 
steaks that have been um, dried and seasoned with salt and pepper so far as he uses a cast iron skillet to sear the sides for about four to five minutes. And then he uses um, some butter and then adds the uh, shrimp with salt and peppers and searing just that for a little bit after putting that in a bowl and setting that to a side and um, ends up sauteing a lot of the uh, remaining ingredients, uh, garlic um, and various um, uh, seasonings and herbs, uh, adding in some white wine type of thing to kind of put that off there to in keeping it stirred. Um, after that gets down to about low heat, when he's kind of comfortable with it, he adds in some cream and some, um, bringing that to a uh, simmer, and then adds in some uh, Parmesan cheese, uh, and then kind of adds the shrimp back into the plant pan, kind of mixes all of that up, and then puts that on a plate onto the side. Um, and then when he serves it, he looks at Zayden and goes, I think we might need a vegetable or something planty to go with it uh, as for a side of good berries. If Zayden is willing to provide. I have good berries, I'm sure. So yeah, it is uh, Parmesan and garlic shrimp with steaks. That sounds tasty. And I apologize for those that may have not eaten yet, so. <laughs> <laughs> I have eaten, but I still like food. <laughs> oh dear. Um, but yes, uh... It is a... I won't even need to require any kind of roll. It's delicious. <laughs> um, because I imagine at this point that, especially with, with Renji's help in providing ingredients when asked and all that kind of stuff, like, hey, Khan, you know your way around this kitchen very, very well, so it's... Yeah, you don't need a roll. It's fine. It's just... It is a very delicious filling meal um, that... Uh, uh, that those who partake in are um, more than happy to just uh, continue eating, uh, and uh, it's it it fills a hole, um, and you eat, those who do eat are uh, they have that kind of feeling of satisfaction, like you know after after a suitably big meal where you're comfortably full, all you can really do is just kind of recline in your chair and bask in the in the fullness for a while. <laughs> Yeah. Um, uh, but yes, uh, you enjoy it. You enjoy a healthy meal. Um, I suppose the only other thing left to do for today, at least on this on this day, before it gets a little too late, because now it is it's gotten to the point in the evening now where you think that even if you do manage to either sprint or teleport over to Uriel's, it's probably going to be closed. Um, so. The only thing left to do would be to have a meeting with Impa and decide what is next on the on the agenda. That's good to me. Okay. She's uh, got the sending stone, so we could just be like, alright, it's time for the meeting. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. Um yeah. Uh you uh you get uh you get a message saying meet me in or meet us in the in the castle in the throne room it's going to be a bit of a big meeting but we'll make sure to get it done quickly it it's kind of late after all i will press to digitate myself twice as much <laughs> okay um so this is the uh, best time for Max to just be wearing a shirt <laughs> it's fine it's okay um you he doesn't care anyway yeah it's fine it's okay it's um, a yeah uh so you make your way up the up the path to the into the castle as um as the sky shifts from uh its evening amber hue to uh, kind of a dark purplish as the night begins to set in. Um, you walk through the castle co uh, corridors um, and eventually you find yourself uh, in the throne room uh, where Marius and Rufus are sitting on their respective thrones. Um, there is another figure there who you don't in immediately recognize but you kind of like gather by the fact that she is standing there that that's probably Sophitia. 
Um, she's kind of taken on the guise of of a um, of a, a a housemaid, effectively, like one of the um, one of the uh, the cleaning staff within the castle, um, and uh, standing next to the, the the king and the prince would be uh, Alea and Impa, respectively. Um, and there are a couple of royal guards that are in the room, but otherwise it's a fairly empty affair. Um, and uh, as you enter, there's no trumpet sound or anything. There's no, like, supremely formal sort of thing where you have to go in and kneel or anything like that. Um, they just kind of enter the room and Impa takes a couple steps forward and says, All right, so, um, welcome back. I trust that you've relaxed a little bit and we won't keep you from your beds too long. Um, Question. Yes. Can can I? Well, this is question to the DM. Oh, yeah. uh, can can I stop my cloak from billowing? Yes, you can. <laughs> okay. I was most led to believe that it was like either an at will or on dramatic cue. Sort of. yeah. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Then then I grossly underestimated the powers of my cloak of billowing. <laughs> you thought he was just billowing all of the time? It's like, I mean, I, it, it's at I will, so if your will is for it to be billowing all the time, then it is billowing all the time. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah. Um, I, I will have it... Uh, I will I will still wear it for protection, but yeah. uh, no, no billowing for important meeting. That's fine. Um, I'll tell your cloak to behave. <laughs> I want to make a magic item like Cloak of Pontifica Dramatica, where it does that and also comes with lighting effects and an eagle swoops in, like a illusory eagle swoops in on your arm whenever you're giving a dramatic speech, but only then. <laughs> and and in case people catch feelings for Renji, uh, there there's dramatic uh, rose vision uh, behind me. <laughs> yeah. Um, every time. Every time. That um, is one of the few things that I can't consciously control. Yeah. yeah. And I hate it. Um, so, uh, yeah, Impa says, so, just to, just to clarify the current situation that we have on our hands at the moment, um, the princess is in a safe location, and she glances to the, to the handmaiden who's nearby, and um, says, um, the one responsible for kidnapping the princess is currently in the dun is currently in the dungeon in a safe location and is being interviewed in council due to his um, unfortunate uh, psychological uh, condition. Um, his uh, previous uh, master has been slain. Um, the agent of the crown that is currently uh that was tasked with recovering the princess was injured but has been also recovered and is safe in kakariko village um as it stands right now as part of your duties of the task force um finding the remaining uh the remaining conspirator um or conspirators i suppose uh as well as uncovering what exactly this cult is and its and trying to stop it, of course, as part of, um, as their part in, um, in killing Lord Simeon is, that remains our top priority at the moment. Um, you of course have your own businesses that you may need to take care of, but that is within your power, and I will not inquire about them if they are specifically of a personal matter. Um, so... I must ask, just for clarification, what is it that you plan on doing um, between, uh, well, in the next few days? We notice some um, cult stuff around Mazro village. Specifically, the Sovereign Hand seems yeah, to um, have a hold on Mazro village. Yeah. Hmm. We're going to check it out. And then make our way towards the, the four places. Okay. All right. If that is the if if that is your next destination, then we'll make sure that is recorded. Um. She kind of looks around briefly and 
This goes to mention something before the doors kind of swing open again and you see Mara uh, rush in. It's like, sorry I'm late. Sorry I'm late. Uh, I, uh, I'm trying to get all the things ready for my um, for my uh, uh, alchemy things has been a nightmare. Um, but I'll hopefully get that sorted soon enough. Um, and Impa says, no, it's all right. It's okay. Um... Your companions were just making sure to note that uh, where you were due to be headed next. Um, MR just kind of nods and says, Oh, right. Uh, it was Masro, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Hmm. Okay. Um, and she kind of weighs something in her mind briefly and says, I will pointedly look at her. Um, she says, I I have a few things that I need to take care of still um, to be fully prepared for this, but I don't want to hold my companions back. Um, it's not terribly long of a distance to get from here to Masro, so if they wanted to go on ahead and I can catch up with them, that would be... I'm perfectly okay with that. It's just I don't want to be going into a known area where a, a dangerous cult is headed and be ill-prepared. Um, and Impa just kind of nods a bit and says, "Well, I mean, how your how your collective uh, handles their business is up to them. So I'm the wrong person to be telling this to." Um, and then Mara just nods a bit and looks at the rest of you and says, Will "That be okay. I it won't be a I can it it'll be a short cart. I we've we've gone further before." Um, I still just offer one of the sending stuff. She'll, uh, she'll gently take and says, Thank you. I promise I won't be long. At, at the latest, I will be there a little later in the day. Um, and uh, Imp says, All right. Okay. Well, if that is settled, then. If it isn't, then by all means, feel free to discuss it later on. But for now, we need to make sure that you're all properly equipped. Um, at which point Rufus pipes up and says, So, it had occurred to me, specifically, that you've done a lot, um, and that's not to say anything... He kind of, like, looks apologetically at Marius and says, It's not to say that, that, uh, that you haven't, but it's just... You've been really busy and, and taking care of responsibilities, so I thought that dealing with the compensation for our task force should be handled by somebody else, and I thought that might well be me. Um, and, uh... Max just give a, yeah, we should be paid, nod. <laughs> yeah. Is it a deception I check I just concerned? <laughs> Is it a deception check to hide a thumbs up? A sleight of hand, if possible. Sleight of hand. I'm much better at those. Oh, a dexterity skill, you say. <laughs> 16 and 11 plus 5. Nice. Yeah, no one... Like, Marius doesn't notice it, Sofiti doesn't notice it. I don't think either of the she could notice it either. Um, I do. If they do, if they do, they probably don't care. Yeah. Uh, unless this doesn't go against my passive perception. <laughs> because that is ridiculously high. Mm -hmm. Um... But yeah, you probably you probably noticed it. I mean, you're all in the case of like, yeah, we should be paid for the the work we have done. Um, Give me money. Yeah. Um. So, um, I've talked with a number of our treasurers and um and with Impa, and there's a couple of things that need to be taken care of. Doing the the job that you have been, uh, which is eliminating a threat to the kingdom, um, as well as assisting in the uh, alleviation of a uh, plague, I think it was. A plague, yes. Um, and he kind of like looks off to the side, and uh, one of the royal guards kind of just gives a nod. He turns around and he picks up a small wooden chest, and he brings it over, and he opens the chest up, to show you uh 
several pouches worth of um worth of gold. Um there is a total of six. Because Bex. Kai's getting paid as well. Um Oh yes. Yeah. Um and uh it says uh, each of those should have at least nine thousand gold pieces in them. Um and oh. Um, as for, um, the, uh, recovery of the princess and all, um, if you, uh, uh, he kind of gestures to the, to the chest, um, if you wanted to take your, the pouches out, um, right. there's something underneath mm -hmm. it. We'll, we'll take those. Mm -hmm. Um, underneath the pouches appears to be a scroll. It does. Those of you trained in magic don't think it's a magical scroll. Um, doesn't appear as ornate, but it does look rather regal. I will carefully pick it up. Okay. It has. Uh, is it like? Is it a scroll case or is it? It is a scroll that is see that has been rolled up and sealed with the emblem of the royal family. I take it carefully, holding it in in two hands, and glance over at probably first at Rufus, then at the king. Um, Rufus kind of gives you a nod as if, go on, open it up. And Marius just kind of like, he's tired. He doesn't, but okay. he doesn't look surprised mm -hmm. by this. He was aware that this was, that mm -hmm. this was something of a thing, and he just kind of also provides something of a nod. Okay, I crack the steel and unroll okay. it. On the scroll, it's it takes a while. Like it, it's a lot of flowery language and a calligraphy sort of thing. Ancient legalese. Ancient legalese. I, um, I must have some like yeah. some training in legalese. Oh yeah, you you're like anyone's at, at a cursory read. You're able to read it and you know mm. the basics of it. But it basically says, Renji Vox, Zayden Shari, he can't see o, Max, because that's all they know his name as. Yep. Um, Mara Fletcher, um, mm. and Kai Kuana are hereby dubbed barons of High of the Kingdom of Hyrule, um, and hereby, as part of their royal duties as barons of the Kingdom of Hyrule, they are provided with a parcel of land that is in the western area of Hyrule, um, in an area that was formerly dominated by the Atamark Dungeon. So while you have a house now, you also have like a parcel of land with a mansion and a dungeon on it, and are also <laughs> politically of a higher standing. <laughs> okay. What's our what's our rank compared to the guy who was really troublesome? No, he's a lord. He's a lord. Yeah. So you Not you are yet. you are below because the lords are basically they make governmental decisions. You are, um, you can essentially say that you can pass local laws on that parcel of land if you were to have like a village or a keep or something in that area, um, and you are. Yeah, you you have political sway now, but you're not like a head of government sort of thing. Mm. Um, Is the not yet. Going to be a lobbyist? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Essentially, um, yeah. so you you're basically like if, 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 you are you are kind of like a a mouthpiece for the for the kingdom of Hyrule. So you you are within that specific area. All of you are the highest authority. If a lord isn't present, and if the royal family isn't present, so you you oh. are, yeah. So you you can pass laws. You can in that specific area. You can make proper decisions, but they can be overridden by a lord above you. Um, I see. Yes. Max isn't going to understand this. He's going to be all right. Ooh. So after a session, I would like to discuss with you possibilities of maybe 
doing something with strongholds and followers and or kingdoms and warfare. Yeah, that's um, fine. <laughs> um, of course, that's fine. It might can, take a while to build out. you a castle. It, it, it may, it may take a while. Um, hmm. Just, just a side tangent I as for this. Castles, I think castles take like at least a day. Uh, uh, yes, because I've heard that uh, there was a city that wasn't built in a day. Yeah, yeah, that's a city in our castle. Yeah. yeah. So a castle, castle could be a knight. I don't know. Castles, uh, castles are big. Yeah. Um, the castle is not a knight. We know this. Like, Reng we like the... Renji's immediate thought is when we go and, uh, like, march on the west, we need to first fortify Artemark as a forward operating base that's the first thought yeah um as you kind of like as you read this and probably read mm -hmm. it out marius will quickly say mm -hmm. it's like i know that i know that the role of nobility and things such as that are not suited for everybody and i understand that if you do not wish to do anything with these titles that you are given that is also fine um it just at, means at, at the the not suited to nobility, but it seems to look like you think. <laughs> Max and Hakan just sitting there with dumb looks on their face, like, what's the big deal? Essentially, what it means is that at this point in time, my younger brother has done well to convince me that for all you have done for the kingdom and no doubt continue to do, it is only fair that should you need to voice concerns or opinions within the court of Hyrule for any various um, policies that may pass or the direction that the kingdom goes in in the future, your voice will be heard. It's, I mean, it will be heard anyway, considering what you have done. This just means that on paper, no one will have the, no one who is currently in the court, um, Sofiti cuts in, most notably Rickshaw. Rickshaw's kind of the reason why. And it's like, yes, yes. Um, so we shouldn't go. Mm, mm. I, I need a wisdom saving throw on that. To, to <laughs> no, Max, Max is just saying out loud, so we shouldn't go rub the sun as well. There's. Um, <laughs> the, Maris, Maris doing his best profession is like, I wouldn't. And Rufus is like, I'm, I'm too much of a sheltered kid. I don't know what's going on. And. Uh, so Fiti's like, but that would be funny though. Um. Fiti <laughs> just goes, ha. Um, yeah, I basically. Need to, wisdom saving throw on me. Uh, you you say whether or not I <laughs> I burst out laughing. Well, um, whoo. Uh, <laughs> this, I would say like normally like you've you've been trained in nobility and everything. Mm -hmm. This that that would be an easy pass, but this is rickshaw we're talking about. Do this you is rickshaw we're talking about, <laughs> and you know, you know what I've done to rickshaw already. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So, oh yeah. dear. Basically, have that spice to feed him. Yeah. Mm. While, that's an opportunity. Yeah. While this is essentially, in short, while this does convey you the titles of baron and every big thing that entitles you as barons of that area mm -hmm. of Artemark or whatever you call it if you want to rename it um, what this truthfully really was is that your opinions and your decisions are trusted and legally speaking because of your rank while Rickshaw outranks you he doesn't have any legal grounds to kick you out of like a court of opinion or anything because mm. just because he lords over you he can't yeah. do that now. So he doesn't load over us quite as much anymore. Yeah. So just just to be certain, like I'm I'm reading over this scroll. Mm -hmm. Um We've been made barons. Yeah. Kai's been made a baron. Kai's been made a baron because even though he's been with you for a short amount of time, he mm -hmm. has like I suppose in I suppose in a certain way, shape or form someone's probably um because this was mostly rufus's idea and as far as rufus mm -hmm. is concerned kai helped and oh, yeah uh, absolutely he, he had every right not to um mm. but he did 
and that's what is important that's what is important mm-hmm. and rufus wants to make sure that is rewarded because kai clearly has some good sensibilities so mm-hmm. yeah kai is also a baron of that area Amazing. A Goron is a Hyrulean Baron. That is that is good. Uh, that is that is specifically good to it, it was, not actively rub into Lord Rickshaw's face. It was specifically funny in the previous game because I was a Gerudo. Yeah. <laughs> oh, amazing. Oh dear. Um, but yes. Um, so after as that's happened, Impa says, "Right. Well." I do apologize for cutting this meeting short, but it is getting late, and um, there is work to be done. So, assembled barons, it is good that we can continue this. If you have any other questions, feel free to come and speak to me, um, or or Leia. We'll do our best to convey that to you. Um, but in the meantime, if you need to get some sleep, go and get some sleep, and... Uh, we wish you safe travels if we do not see you before you depart on the morrow. Um, and, of course, on behalf of the kingdom, um, Rufus then kind of just nods a bit and says, thank you for everything that you've done. And um, I think what we'll do, since it is since it is time, we will... Uh... If you don't mind, mm-hmm. just for some quick things. Um, sure. Because, uh, so... The thing that we talked about earlier, uh, Kai was going to give that as a gift to Hikon, uh, leaving. Okay. So what Kai does, uh, since he's been there, so that way he's getting ready to do things, um, is he will uh, give out a note that kind of has that uh, for um, Hikon to go pick up when everyone goes to Uriel's tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Um, he will give... Um, 500, the, the remaining 500 gold that he had before he got this um, to Zaiden specifically goes for spellcasting components. I know those things get expensive. Um, and we'll happily take it. Mm-hmm. He'll go to Renji. He specifically gives Renji the hammer that they sparred with beforehand. And he goes, you don't have to use it. It's just something to think over. I don't need it. And get another one, as he kind of just like holds the big bag of money that he was just given. Um, and he goes to Max and he speaks to Max and Gore and he goes, "I really don't know what it is that I could give you, but I do want to say that I appreciate you for keeping me along." Type of thing. That's just nods. Um, and then to the assembled barons, he goes, "Now." It seems like you might need somebody to, say, gather some people together to go take a look at this uh, uh, area and maybe get some foundations going. So, I don't know about you, but I could go take a look at that for you, and I know that I've got some people that I can get a hold of if we need some raw materials. And generally, something that we could talk about afterwards is... Kai would like to go to the Ottermark area and start getting that set up for whatever it is that we plan to do with that area. Yes. Oh. Um, in, you know, character, Goron, Ren- perhaps, and... in character, in character, Renji's goes. You are going above and beyond your dedication to uh, Brother Darunia. And well, I mean, at this point, I have, like, legal authority now, so, like, I gotta sit there and figure out how to address this with Darunia true. before I go back. <laughs> that is definitely true, and uh, we might... I would suggest uh, meeting up with, um... What's, uh... Is it Dr. Lord Dr. Crane, who has the, uh... contraption to, uh, contact Goron City? Yes. Yes. Uh, I say, uh, I would suggest visiting Lord uh, Dr. Crane uh, to maybe contact Goron City uh, for what your best course of action is now that you've been appointed uh, into the Hyrulean nobility. All right. Well, that's something to think about. 
All right, I'm going to go ahead and uh, probably get some rest and get a head start on that in the morning, at least when I wake up in comparison to the rest of you. So y'all have a good night. Be safe. I want to see you again. Mm. All right? Not surely. And Kai will take his leave. Okay. Um, and so it is that uh, that uh, Kai uh, departs from the party, um, at least in the in the current present sense, and he departs and <laughs> Khan rejoins um, as uh, as the storm's eye have been elevated into high society and uh with uh with that i think what we'll do is we'll need more crests <laughs> crest roll <laughs> crest roll we'll uh we'll call it a night for that uh for mm -hmm. that session thank you very much everybody so much for listening or watching i have been articulate t this has been episode 95 of hyrule chronicles legend of zelda DD campaign and with me as always i have baron renji vox played by the left. yes it, yeah absolutely <laughs> i this is going to be interesting being both uh a higher rank and also not the only nobleman in the party anymore yeah I have had Barons Kaikuana and Hikan Sio played by Alvarance. It's it's something new. I was not expecting a title. <laughs> <laughs> Much less two. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I have had Baron Zaiden Shari being played by Rover Pirate. See you later. And I have had Baron Max being played by Keystruth. Yeah, Baron Max doesn't sound <laughs> no, we, we we are going to have to give you another name. It's mine. Um, no. I think oh, that it's fine. mine. <laughs> yeah. That's fair, but like like so not, sorry, an, an extra name. It's he just has like... a surname. Yeah, yeah it's might win. That is true. Because he doesn't use it. Yeah. That is fair. Maybe it's just Max. Max of the Storm's Eye. Max is for Max's first. Uh, Baron Max's decree. name, title, surname, and everything is Max. Yeah, Fair. yeah. Ba Max's first barony decree is to just make it a legal obligation for anyone in this territory to just call him Max. No titles. And that is, and that is his <laughs> only one. That's the yeah. only thing he does. Yeah. And and, and if you're uh, called Baron Max, unless you're like a traveler who just doesn't know, uh, there will be punishment. <laughs> it's just. Uh, I He's not going to care enough to enforce it. It's just like yeah. there yeah. won't be no enforcement, but there will be technically, like lawfully, a punishment. Yeah, he'll just um, be really mad at you, and you know he's Max. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, yeah. Um, good luck. You might get zapped. See, we will see you guys next time in episode ninety-six. Thank you again. Bye bye now. Bye bye. bye, -bye.